Welcome everybody to this information session that's taking place tonight. Uh, my name is Gil Brockenier and I'm on uh, Northumberland County Council as this is a county council project. And I have been, I have been uh, the chairman of the steering committee for the last uh, several years. And, uh, and I, I think that, uh, you know, it's, it's safe to say that we've covered a lot of ground. Uh, We've had many, many discussions. We've got a very strong steering team, and we've had, we're very pleased with the uh, with the consultant that has been taking us through this process for the last year and a half or so. And so, the, for what you can expect tonight is that we're going to start off with a presentation from Don Brackley from IBI. Uh, he's been the lead project manager on this on this particular project, and uh, his, his presentation will take about 30 minutes. There will not be an opportunity to ask questions during his presentation, as he wants to have the continuous flow to be make sure you get the uh, get the information. But uh, he should be finished around five o'clock or six o'clock, and then we're going to open it up at six o'clock to questions from the floor and or presentations. And uh, so we'll be asking at that time that people keep their presentations to admit to a maximum of five minutes, so that we can get everybody up to the microphone who wishes to speak. And uh, so just before I call on Dawn to open it up, I just want to remind everybody we're here you know, to, um, to present some information and if we're going to, uh, if you're going to get the most information, then we're going to ask you to please respectfully listen to uh, whatever people have to say, regardless of who's talking, whether it's members of the public or whether it's somebody from the steering committee or the consultant. And uh, we always respect that people have a right to a different opinion. And uh, when we talk, we talk about issues, we don't talk about people. And we don't want any interruptions when people are talking. That's not fair to the person who is speaking at the time. And we want to manage our time, as I said. So we will take, uh, you know, five minutes for, for our maximum presentation, questions and comments, and two, the maximum two questions per person. And we, we don't feel there's a need to repeat questions over again. And if you have something you'd like to say uh, that has already been covered, please don't come up to the mic again unless you have some additional or new information on that particular topic. So bearing all of that in mind, I'm now going to call on Don Drackley to uh, take us through his presentation. Thank, thank you, Gil. And uh, thank you everybody for coming out on a Saturday afternoon. But I'm not surprised at the turnout. I know this issue about the river crossing in Trent Hills has been weighing heavy on this community for a number of years. And uh, what our company has been hired to do is to finish the environmental assessment process so that everybody, including yourselves, knows what the plan is uh, for the river crossing for the next 20, 30, 40 years here in Trent Hills. Um, as Gil said, there, there are two groups that are involved in this project. Number one is the steering committee, and very quickly the steering committee is made up of uh, Gil as the, uh, the mayor of Coburg and um, the chair of the, of the steering committee. Hector McMillan as the mayor and the warden is also involved, as Mark Lovshin from the county, Rosemary Keeler McLennan from the uh, town, Elizabeth Saville, who's the uh, new uh, Chief Administrative Officer of the County, Northumberland. Um, Mike Rudder, who's the Chief Administrative Officer of Trent Hills. Uh, Jim Peters, who's the Planning Director at Trent Hills. Brian Redden, who's with the Chamber of Commerce. Alan Appleby, who's representing the Second Alma Residents Association. Tom Kerr, who's representing the Business Improvement Association. Tim Blake, who's representing the Fire Department. Uh, Mo Panu here, who's representing staff and Mark Mills is somewhere in the room who's also representing staff. Uh, we as the consultants have been working primarily uh, uh, with Mo and Jim Peters and Mike Rudder on the kind of the day-to-day -day technical aspects of the project and we report them back to the steering committee and so far we've had four meetings with the steering committee. Every one of those meetings has been completely open to the public and I think we've been able to have a good exchange of information. Um, just to give you a quick brief summary, uh, we're not the first consultants, as you probably know, who've been involved in this project. Back in uh, 2008, the county uh, retained a company called ACOM 
to conduct this environmental assessment of, a, uh, of the river crossing in Trent Hills. And to make a long story short, they recommended that the second Alma crossing be constructed. And that was taken to council. And that's when public came out and noted concern about that. And the question came up, is there any other way of doing this? And one of the questions was, is it possible to twin the existing Bridge Street Bridge? So what the, what the county did was to retain another engineering company special, that specializes in bridges to answer the question of whether that's feasible. That company said, yes, it is feasible, but at the same time they recommended the county still plan for a second river crossing for the long term. Then uh, the county hired a company called Genevar to actually design that bridge in order to nail down whether it's feasible to twin the existing bridge and how much it would cost. And that's what Genevar did. And then we were brought in to finish up the whole process. And I have to stress really strongly right now, we were not hired to restart this project. We were not hired to redo the work that other consultants had done. We were hired to review that work and incorporate it into a finished product. And that's what we're working on. We have two alternatives for the crossing of the uh, Trent River here in, in Califord. One is to maintain the existing Bridge Street crossing, uh, twin it, and eventually when the old part of the bridge needs to be replaced, it would be replaced so that the, the town would end up with a new structure. It would have uh, three lanes on it, one lane per direction plus a center turn lane, and off to the side it would have a recreational path. The second alternative is the second Alma crossing. And I have to make it clear here that the second Alma crossing also includes the retention of the Bridge Street Bridge and the replacement of it when it comes to the end of its life. Technical problems, of course. Now I want to talk a little bit about some other work that's been conducted on the project since we retained a year ago to complete this work. And number one, number one, as I mentioned, uh, the uh, engineering company McCormick Rankin did the feasibility study of, of twinning the bridge. So that's the first big piece of pro additional work. Then a company called Meridian Planning was hired to design a way of evaluating uh, the, the two alternatives, the existing bridge versus building a new bridge. So they designed a very complicated, in my opinion, way of doing that. Then, um, as I said, the, the company called Genevar designed how to twin the bridge and then replace the old bridge and eventually come up with this, this new structure that I mentioned. Um, when we got involved, there was questions about the existing rental apartments that are down at the existing bridge and uh, what would happen to them if they were removed. Because in order to build a widened and twinned Bridge Street Bridge, all three groups of buildings at the end of the bridge, that is on the west side and the east side, would have to be removed. And the question was asked by some members of the public, well, what's that going to do to the supply of, of uh, low-income housing in this town? So uh, that was studied by a company called TWC. They did c conclude that removing those buildings would be a significant impact on the rental housing stock in Campbellford. Uh, but they also at the same time said that over time that loss could be mitigated by working to improve, improve uh, rental housing stock throughout in other parts of the community. Uh, another question that came up was, um, are those buildings at the ends of the bridges heritage buildings. And what was, uh, in, I remember one of our steering committee members, one of the uh, members of the audience said a, a, something that I don't forget. She said they, they may be old, but it doesn't necessarily mean they're heritage. And that is exactly what the heritage consultant concluded that was retained to, to determine whether those buildings are heritage. They are not heritage buildings. They are old. They are being used as low-income rental units, as you all know. They don't look very nice from the street. Um, the owners of those buildings have contacted us and has basically said that they're for sale. 
So um, uh, this is the information that's been provided to us on the status of those buildings. And a couple of other quick things. Uh, we had some additional archaeology work done. The archaeologist tells us that if the um, bridge, street bridge was widened or if a, a, a second Alma crossing was, uh, was built, there would have to be archaeological work along the edge of the river. Um, the environmental consultants dealing with noise concluded that there would be noise generated by both projects, but in the case of the, uh, the Bridge Street Bridge, it's downtown and there are no sensitive noise receivers except for those rental apartments. And in the case of the second Alma, yes, there would be noise impacts, and it would be very difficult to mitigate those noise impacts because of the design of the, of the bridge over the river. And we had a, 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 an environmental consultant take a look at the river itself, and they concluded that there are really no um, natural environment implications of building a new bridge or twinning the existing bridge over the river. So ACOM back in 2009 concluded that by the year 2027, that there would be increased river crossing traffic, uh, that, that the, this town would require increased river crossing capacity, and that will assist in reducing current and future traffic congestion, emissions, and road user costs, as well as providing future economic growth and development. These are their words, not ours. There would be reduced reliance on the existing uh, secondary routes like the Trent Drive route, there would be improvements in the efficiency, the efficient movement of goods. Uh, it would provide safer conditions for vehicular, pedestrian, and cycling travel, and improved opportunities for active transportation like walking and cycling. So that was what was presented to the uh, Trent Hills and to the county councils back in late 2009, those, those conclusions. They also concluded in 2009 that by 2027, uh, the existing Bridge Street Bridge even if the traffic signals were optimized to the max, which by the way they already have been since, since then, that we, the bridge would be experiencing very poor traffic conditions at both intersections at the ends of the bridge. Um, that if a second bridge was built, and therefore there were two bridges operating across the river, that the intersections would operate in fair to good conditions. Now IBI Group, our company, we looked at the same information, we updated traffic counts, that sort of thing, and forecasted a little bit further to the year 2033, 20 years of growth. And we basically came to the same conclusions. That the existing bridge cannot handle very much more traffic growth before those intersections get very congested. But if there was a, uh, a third lane, a three lane bridge built, or if a second Alma bridge was built, the intersections along Bridge Street would operate well for the, for the next 20 years. Um, other traffic conclusions is, is that um, the, bottom, the bottom line conclusion is, is that your existing Bridge Street Bridge will not be able to handle safely and efficiently the volume of traffic that is expected to grow across the bridge over the next 20 years. And this is where I have to mention something that I've been mentioning this afternoon here, and it's important to know a lot of you who've talked to me and talked to the rest of the team have understandably talked about the conditions today. Is traffic really bad that today? Do we really need another bridge today? Do we need the bridge, to, bridge widen today? This project is not about today. This project is about 20, 30, 40 years into the future. This is long-term planning. And what the long-term planning shows is that if you, if you twin the existing Bridge Street Bridge and created those three lanes that I mentioned, that would operate well for about 20, 25 years, but then as the traffic continues to grow at a very slow pace, but still a continuous pace, there would come a point where you'd be right back to the conditions that you're experiencing today. However, if there was a second bridge, so you had four lanes of traffic across the river, two on Bridge Street and two on Second Alma, that those four lanes would be able to accommodate the, the growth in river crossing traffic for the next 40 years. Now, here's, an, here's a real-life example about what I'm talking about, about why, what it means to cross the river. On Friday, February the 28th of this year, <coughs> the Cambridge Fire Department uh, responded to a fire on the west side of the river. And the response from station number one, that's the one 
in downtown Cambridge, or it's in Camelford. I live in Cambridge, that's why I said that. Um, it took six minutes and 35 seconds to reach the fire. From station number two in Hastings, it took 18 minutes and 52 seconds to reach, uh, which is 12 minutes longer. And from station number three in Warworth, it took 16 and a half, 16.52 minutes or 10 minutes longer. The point here, ladies and gentlemen, is, is this 10 to 12 minute additional time for that fire truck to reach that fire could have meant some very unpleasant situations in terms of how the fire grows over those 10 to 12 minutes. And the fire chief is here if anybody has any questions about the, the details of, of containing a fire. And if it had been an EMS, if it had been a heart attack or something like that, basically after three minutes, three to five minutes, there is serious chance of the, the patient being in dire straits because of that weight. So this is the kind of situation that is occurring here. And this occurred on February the 28th. We have a serious So, to start to wrap up, what, we, what I want to do here is hit the high points of what the the advantages and disadvantages, or the pros and cons are, of each of these two finalist alternatives for crossing the Trent River. On the subject of transportation, if we keep to a, a, a twin existing bridge street bridge, there are some advantages to that. It's, it continues to use the existing river location, river crossing location, so there's no functional changes to any of the roads in town. Um, it will provide adequate traffic capacity on the bridge street corridor. And that would therefore discourage traffic from shortcutting into other, using other routes to get around and into people's neighborhoods. And it provides opportunities to, to improve those intersections at Bridge Front and Bridge Queen. The disadvantages of uh, using the and uh, twinning the existing bridges is that <coughs> the that that after 20 years, that bridge is likely still not going to be able to handle the volume of traffic that would continue to grow. Um, there would be limited emergency response capability on one congested river crossing. And if adequate bridge street capacity is not maintained, traffic would start to divert to try to find different ways to get around the town after they either approach the bridge or get off the bridge, and that could be in front of people's houses. And the long-term truck congestion across the bridge is expected uh, because there's no alternative crossing for commercial vehicles. On the other hand, from a traffic point of view, if you built the second Alma, the advantages of that are that it meets both the long and the very long-term uh, transportation needs of the community. It provides river crossing redundancy because you've got two bridges. So if anything ever happened on one, you could still get across on the other. And that could be an emergency or that could simply be regular maintenance of one of the bridges. It would always be the other one to use. Provides road access to planned growth areas in Campbellford, which are mainly to the east and the south. Um, downtown traffic would be diverted from Bridge Street, but it would mainly be the traffic that doesn't stop. It's the through traffic that goes through downtown. And that the downtown would become more pedestrian friendly because of that. Admittedly, the cons of building the second Alma Crossing from a transportation point of view is it adds traffic to new streets like Alma and Simpson and Coburg. Uh, traffic controls, new traffic controls would be required. For example, traffic signals at the corner of the bridge and um, um, where the Canadian Tiger is. Simpson? No, not Simpson. Grand. Grand. Grand Road. And it splits the traffic volumes between two bridges, so admittedly we know that the merchants in the downtown would be concerned that the pure volume of traffic by their, by their front doors would be reduced. But as I said, a lot of that reduction in traffic would be through traffic that would never go through their front doors. From a social environment point of view, the, the advantages of twinning the existing bridge is that we're not affecting any single family houses, just those rental units and those old buildings at the ends of the bridge. And it does provide river crossing access, access for some of the planned residential development in town. But the disadvantages are it does displace that low income housing, so that's going to have to be made up somewhere else. And it provides no access to growth areas to the south of 2nd Street. If, uh, it's a, if it, in terms of the second Alma bridge crossing, the advantages are it's the long term replacement of uh, the, the Bridge Street bridge by avoiding. Um, 
the Bridge Street Bridge can stay two lanes because there's another bridge in its, uh, across the river. So therefore, there's no impact on the, those rental units, on the commercial property. Unfortunately, there is, a lot of it is empty right now, but it would be still available for rent. But the disadvantages are, from a social point of view, and we readily admit this, and I think it's obvious to everybody, that there would be residential property impacts along 2nd Street, between Saskatoon and Front Street. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that those residential properties would be um, demolished. That's not in fact necessary. Perhaps the, the use of those residential uses would change because the, 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 the neighborhood would change. But if, for example, the, the county purchases some of those properties, the county can um, resell or release those properties for other purposes. And we've all seen in cities where older buildings, older homes, for example, are turned into things like offices and restaurants and that sort of thing. The existing residential areas along the New River Crossing would experience traffic intrusion as well. So admittedly, the whole character of Second Street would change, and, and Alma and Simpson for that matter. They would become uh, streets much different than they are today. From a cultural environment point of view, we know that if we maintain the existing Bridge Street Bridge, we make, we're maintaining the historic river crossing in Camelford, and there, there doesn't appear to be any designated heritage buildings associated with that existing crossing. In terms of disadvantages, there really doesn't seem to be any disadvantages of a, of a twinned existing bridge as long as the bridge copies the, exist, the shape of the existing bridge, and that's what the province would require. Second, all the uh, pros are it maintains river, the river crossing location or, and, and uh, waterscape using as well, and it preserves heritage landscapes in the downtown. But the disadvantages from a cultural heritage point of view obviously are that there would be direct and indirect impacts on designated and listed heritage homes along the east approach along, along uh, Second Street. And that, that would also mean potential changes in the, in the use of those buildings from homes to other uses, office, retail, restaurant, etc. From a natural environment point of view, we're pretty clear on this one. Um, the, uh, everybody knows the existing Bridge Street Bridge drains right into the river, and it's upstream of your water supply. That's not a good situation. If an existing, if the, if the second Alma Bridge was built, especially if it accommodated truck traffic, then you would have less chance of any incidents happening on the old Bridge Street Bridge that would run into the river and into your water source. The economic uh, environment impacts the existing Bridge Street Bridge advantages are it does maintain Bridge Street as the primary east-west travel route through Campbellford for the downtown businesses. And it's estimated to cost, to twin and replace the existing bridge, the cost would be similar to building the, um, the second Alma Bridge and eventually replacing the, the Bridge Street Bridge with a, with a new two-lane structure. The disadvantages are that it does, dis, uh, it does uh, displace some of the businesses along Bridge Street and future downtown traffic congestion, if it's allowed to happen uh, with just one bridge crossing, is going to detract from downtown business. Downtown will not be a very nice place for people to, to visit, to shop, or to eat, or to do whatever they do downtown if it's, if it's congested. The advantages of a, a new second Alma bridge is it, it provides long-term opportunities for residential development. Uh, in the Second Street area, and it opens new business opportunities on the west side of the river, on the Grand Road, on the street node. The disadvantages are that it impacts downtown businesses uh, from uh, being very close to the Bridge Street Bridge, and that the Bridge Street Bridge, when it eventually has to be replaced, if there's a second bridge, it would be a pretty straightforward exercise to simply put up barriers one day, close the Bridge Street Bridge, tear it down, and rebuild it. Um, that's a, a, a much simpler process than the alternative of twinning it and then replacing it. Now, uh, one of the issues that has always been at the forefront is how much is all this going to cost, and what we've concluded is the cost of the twinning the uh, existing Bridge Street Bridge is about $26.5 million, including the bridge, the roadworks, the traffic signals, uh, all those sorts of things. The cost of building a new second Alma crossing and then later on going back and replacing the existing two-lane Bridge Street Bridge is about the same at $28 million. So 
in the in the world of, of structural engineering, a cost of 26 and a half to 28 is, is like a margin of error. It's very close. So in conclusion, um, what we as the consultants retained by the county did was took a look at all those pros and cons and made up our own professional opinion on which uh, of those two alternatives would be the best route to follow under these six criteria. So under transportation, we concluded that uh, alternative two, the second, the, the, the new bridge and the replacement of the existing bridge was the best. From the social environment, they were, they were so close that we could not see one being an advantage over the other. From the cultural environment, obviously, the, uh, the twinning of, and replacing the existing bridge and retaining Second Street uh, the way it is today would be the advantage, uh, would be the, the preferred. The natural environment, we gave the advantage to the, the new bridge and, and the replacing of the existing bridge um, simply because there would be less risk to the river environment of building a straightforward new bridge in the river as opposed to this rather complicated process of uh, twinning the existing bridge and then tearing the old part down and building up a new part. The economic environment would be the advantage to the, uh, the alternative to the new bridge and, and that's mainly because it gives the opportunity to contain traffic and control traffic through your downtown to make your downtown a more uh, vital and vibrant place as, as opposed to a place that over the years, and remember in the future, would have traffic congestion problems. And the cost, we gave the advantage also to the existing, or to the alternative to a new bridge and replacement, mainly because there's a lot of unanswered questions about replacing the existing bridge. Uh, to to, to uh, build a new bridge beside it and then tear down the old one may involve more utility works, for example, than we're aware of today. So we, from an engineering point of view, there are more risks associated with a tricky piece of engineering like that than there is with Alternative 2, which was just, is just going in and building a new bridge. So we gave the advantage to that. So the preferred river crossing plan that we presented to the steering committee in our last meeting involves a, a new road network for the town. It's the same road network as there is today, except there's a new major road in it. And that road is Coburn, Second, Alma, and Simpson, and a new bridge across the river. One last thing before I conclude. A number of you this afternoon have asked if your property is involved in a project like that. How would you be compensated? And back in 2009, the county did develop a draft compensation policy uh, to, to deal exactly with that question. And it's for the acquisition, purchasing, compensation, and or expropriation of land for the new river crossing in Camelford, be it, be it the, the second Alma one or be it the, the widening and the twinning of the existing bridge. Um, the point is, is they need this policy and they need property acquisition to ensure that whatever the preferred crossing is that they decide, that they're actually going to be able to build it. They have to purchase land or compensate landowners for impacts. What any municipality does is they always try first to get a voluntary deal. Basically a willing buyer and a willing seller and they make a, a, a deal. And that's what they prefer. However, sometimes if there cannot be a mutually agreed upon uh, a sale, the municipality through the Expropriation Act has the, the right and the ability to expropriate the property. The property is still sold at fair market value, but it is expropriated as opposed to a willing seller or willing buyer. So these, these mechanisms to compensate either for taking property, all of it, or for taking parts of property, or for compensating a landowner for what we call injurious effect, you know, a change in what we call the enjoyment of their property, that would always all be part of this uh, compensation program. The next steps, uh, on April the 25th, we're holding our next steering committee meeting. It will once again, as usual, be completely open to the public, but that's when the steering committee will be asked to make a decision about alternative one versus alternative two. Then on June the 3rd, it's planned that that decision of the steering committee will go to the Trent Hills Council for their uh, comment and endorsement. And then on June 18th, 
It will go to the county council for their review and endorsement. And if they do endorse it at the county, then the week of June 23rd, an issue will be noted, or an issue will be, excuse me, a notice will be issued uh, that the environmental assessment has now been completed and the public will be given a 30-day period in which to review and to comment on that decision, whatever that decision is. Now, if you don't like what the decision is, you have the right then to uh, request the um, Ontario Minister of the Environment to intervene in the project and require what's called a Part 2 order, which means the Minister would require the uh, county as the proponent to uh, do more work um, if they felt that there was anything done here over the last five years in this project that wasn't done correctly. And if at the end, on the end of July, if uh, no comments like that are made to the Minister, or if they are and they've been resolved, then this project is finished. And uh, that doesn't mean that the bulldozers are out the next day. We have recommended that the county not be prepared to build uh, whatever the solution is for 10 years. And that may seem like a lot of time, but there is a lot of work to do in those 10 years. There's a, a detailed design of roads and bridges to be done. There is property acquisition and um, property compensation to be negotiated. There are utilities to be re relocated. There is the likely requirement of the Ministry of Culture to have a heritage impact assessment done if it happens to be the second Alma corridor that's, that's selected, or even the existing Bridge Street corridor. The, the Ministry of Culture may say that they want to know exactly what's going to happen to those buildings uh, at the ends of the bridge. So that's the process to wrap it up. asked questions. Like I said, when's the new bridge going to be built? Not for 10 years. If the, uh, and then when the existing Bridge Street bridge has to be replaced, after that 10 years, it's probably got another 20 years. So there's nothing is going to be happening immediately. Why is an environmental assessment needed if the new bridge won't be built for 10 years? There's three main reasons. Like I said, there's a lot of work to be done. Number two, that the county needs an, a, an environmental assessment approval to access provincial and federal infrastructure funding that comes up every couple of years. There's either from the federal government or the provincial government opportunities for infrastructure funding. The catch is the municipality has to have an approved project. They can't say, well, we were thinking of building a new bridge. They actually have to have the plan in place to do it. And also, for all of you people who live here and own property here, and this is your home, at least it, it gives you a final answer on what the county and the town are planning to do about roads and specifically river crossings in Campbellford. Why does IBI Group, uh, yeah, why does IBI Group prefer that, that solution, the, the uh, alternative two? And, um, this question has been asked of us a lot. We had a steering committee meeting on June the 28th, and we were asked at that meeting to provide our preliminary findings. It was like a progress report on what we had found so far. So we reported much of what I told you tonight about the pros and cons, as we knew them at the end of June, about the, the two alternatives. And we readily said, you know, that the, the second Alma crossing has some advantages and some real disadvantage, and so does the twinning of the existing bridge. Some people interpreted that and remind us of it weekly, that we made a recommendation saying that twinning the existing bridge is the way to go. We did not make that recommendation. Um, how will heritage impacts be addressed by the Minister of Tourism, Culture and Sport and their requirements for heritage impact assessments once the environmental assessment identifies a preferred project? Because in, in, until the environmental assessment is finished and, and wrapped up, there is no project on which the ministry to make a decision about what they're going to do about any heritage impacts. And uh, that is the end of my presentation, Mr. Chair. My request is directed to Mr. Brockenier as chair of the steering committee. Mr. Brockenier, this second crossing issue 
which has dragged on for nearly seven years, is so controversial, it has caused a considerable amount of upset in the community. In some cases, people are afraid to talk about or take sides on the issue because their businesses or their relationships with friends and co-workers may suffer. Members of the steering committee need to be able to vote freely according to their conscience. I am therefore requesting that when the final vote of the steering committee takes place on April 25th, that it be by secret ballot. Could this discussion please be placed on the agenda of your next meeting? Thank you. Okay. Absolutely, we will put on we can put that on the agenda for discussion. Thank you very much. My name is Paul Smith. I'm a resident of Campbellford. I live at 71 Felicia Street, South. And my question to the committee is this, based on what we have just heard. I am concerned that if the second Alma Street Bridge is, is the one that proved, and that we were advised at the February meeting that this would be a two-lane bridge, which would be unable to be uh, extended to a three- or four-lane bridge at a later time, that I'm concerned that there's no guarantee, or perhaps you can give me a guarantee, that the Bridge Street Bridge will be replaced in 20 or 30 years. Because it seems to me that this is all on the condition that we are going to have two bridges. And I'm not at all certain that that will happen due to the funding, and I'm looking at the county's infrastructure uh, town for transportation, as you're well aware, it's in a, almost a deficit position at the present time. There's no plan to have it really expanded, not to take into all these considerations that are going to take place in 30 years with the province uh, also being in the same deficit position. And I'm concerned that we could easily end up with one bridge, two lane, and be left with it at second and have no bridge when the time comes that bridge when it has to be replaced. And if I could just, I have a second, I know there's a lot of second question, but maybe I could answer this one or put this over to someone and then just to say another quick question. Go ahead. Okay, the comment I have actually is that I'm, I'm, I was surprised that we did not have tonight a drawing of this proposed bridge at Second Street to show what it would look like. And I also was surprised that we didn't have the drawing of the uh, bridge that, uh, of the, uh, of the, Jennifer bridges for the Bridge Street Bridge, which we're, uh, which we have, uh, I know there are some of them, so we couldn't compare apples with oranges because we didn't have these at the present time. I just wonder why that wasn't the case. Thank you okay. very much. Okay, then I can, I'll, I'll direct that. Uh, the first question was, uh, is there an intent? The intention of this all along, but the committee has been to, uh, has been to replace the uh, Bridge Street Bridge when necessary, but I'm going to ask Mo Panu to talk to, the, talk to that. Um, answer that question first. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, the question uh, regarding the guarantee for the second and Alma Bridge is basically in our EA. Uh, the EA is a two part EA. Um, the, wood, the solution is proposed um, is um, either we build a um, three-lane bridge at an existing corridor, or the second option is we build a two-lane bridge at second and Alma, and then subsequently replace, uh, replace the existing bridge. And if county is to, uh, on a later date, to deviate from that, we will have to go through another EA process, uh, which would be very similar to this process. Yeah, I'm well aware of that. I mean, that was quite clear in the material you provided. What I'm not, I'm not uh, confident in is that the county, at this time, will commit themselves to a second bridge. Well, if I, I'll ask, that's a political question, so I'll give you a political answer. And uh, the, the political answer is that it is our intention to do that 20 years into the future, 30 years into the future. But this, uh, this county, Paterno County Council, uh, cannot make a commitment that is binding 20 to 30 years in the future for a future county council. But there, there is every intention to try and do that. I, 
and it would make it different because you were going to, if you're going to commit yourself to a second street bridge, as what has been said already, that it's going to be not for 10 years, the county council is going to change maybe twice in that period of time. So what you're doing now, if you go for the second Alma, is committing a council three times, three times, uh, you know, three uh, uh, elections away. So it is going to be committing another council. So if you can do it in 10 years, why can't you do it in 20 years? Well, we can't do it in 10 years either, but uh, our intention is to, we are, uh, uh, you know, through our capital program, we are planning on putting money away towards the, you know, the construction of a bridge 10 years from now. If another county council comes along and decides to do something else with that money, then we, I, have no, I have no control of that. And the second question you had, I'm going to ask Don to respond to it about the, um, the, the illustrations for the two bridges. If, if I can, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> Before I respond to the second question, <clears throat> as, as Mo Penner said, if County Council approves an environmental assessment and it, and it has two bridges in it, as far as the Ministry of the Environment is concerned, that's what they have to build. So when the time comes to get the environmental and building approvals from the, from the province, the province will say, okay, you're building a new bridge and when will you be building or you are still committed to building uh, to rebuild the existing one. And the only way they could change that would be to redo the environmental assessment, which would be another public process. In terms of the renderings, <coughs> first of all, uh, renderings had been uh, prepared of the, um, the twinning of the existing bridge back in 2009, and those are available on the project website. The plan for the um, second Alma Bridge is also on the project website. And so we felt that because we were focusing in on finishing the project and we had one afternoon with you folks, we would focus on um, the recommendation, not necessarily what it looks like. You can find out what they look like if you go to the website. However, I've spoken to a couple of people and I said how, how useful it would be. So we're going to make an arrangement over the next couple of weeks, hopefully if the snow goes, uh, and it doesn't look so ugly out there. It, the whole thing depends on taking good actual photography and then do a rendering of what the after is. We're going to see if we can do that so we can present it to the steering committee on, the, on April 25th. Thanks. Thank you. Yes? I believe there was unintentionally some misinformation given. Were you replied to the gentleman saying, that the county had set aside money from your county budget records of this year you have in it states your budget does not include any allocation of county share for the Brighton grade or the potential new bridge in Campbellford. You Tom. might have accidentally misinformed that last gentleman. No, I, I, what I said was we are building reserves. So we are, our, we are building our reserves every year um, at the county, and then we will determine what we do with those reserves. So that is not I did, I did setting not... aside money for the bridge. Well, that's not specifically for the bridge. You're right, Tom. So, okay. you might realize that that wasn't quite the truth. Okay. okay. I, was, I, I did not intend to mislead uh, the uh, gentleman who asked the question. But we are aggressively putting money aside each year uh, for a large capital reserve. Okay, next question. My name is Dennis Van Landingham, and I'm the president of Campbellford. I live at 116 Grand Road. And in the community press on Thursday, March 6, uh, page 9, the Northumberland County CAO was quoted as saying, the cost for annual infrastructure upkeep is $27 million annually. And there is a shortfall of $10 million this year, $15 million the next year and tax increases to cover this would be unattainable. Would you please explain how Northumberland County, into which our tax dollars do flow, is planning to afford its current debt and still pay for its share of the cost of this unnecessary second bridge? Well, we do that the same way that every municipality does um, that has a shortfall in infrastructure. So what we have to do is we have to uh, prioritize the, uh, the projects that we will work on. 
country. We, we know that every municipality across the country is uh, suffering from infrastructure debt and they will never cover off, they will never be able to complete all the infrastructure projects that are required. So they, they go to work and they put a priority on the one, on, on what is really needed and address them in that order. Uh, I don't know, would you like to Yeah, there's, there's more to it than, than just that. Um, Thanks for the question, Dennis. Um, and I, I guess what you're saying is the affordability and, and to be able to pay for it. We need to do something with the existing bridge. We know that day is coming. And we can all wish it away, but we know that's not going to happen either. What's being proposed, whether we build two bridges or twin the existing bridge, is approximately, as the consultant said, about the same price. So we're going to have to do it. We're going to have to find the money. Now, the infrastructure deficit you just saw is something new to municipalities in Ontario. Since all municipalities have been forced by the province, and I fully agree with what they've done, to move to public sector accounting board, accrual-based accounting methods. So what you're looking at are numbers that are generated for the lifespan of the asset. So when it looks at those deficits, they're talking over the lifespan of the asset. The whole idea of, of the province moving municipalities to PSAB was because uh, a municipality, historically, something suddenly happened. Oh, we need a new bridge, or the wheels fell off the dump truck, and they had to scramble to get the money because they didn't have any reserves, or, or very little. With PSAB, it gives the responsibility and accountability to the municipality to start generating monies for those assets. So, for example, the minute a uh, municipality justifies buying a new snowplow truck, they also need to register in their mind that someday they're going to have to maintain it, and then they're going to have to replace it. So rather than going and borrowing money when it's necessary, that money is in the bank as it's needed. The, the, the province is also changing their methodology of how they're going to fund municipalities in Ontario which is something as municipal leaders we've been asking for for a decade. And the Premier announced today that a consistent, steady funding stream is going to be coming to municipalities that they can count on each and every year. So some of that's also going to come from there. I hope that helps you. Okay. Next speaker. I'm Brenda Coaches, and I live in Campbellford. And Mr. Chair, I wonder if somebody could keep track of how long we spend on each question. I see how many people there are here. Yes. So I wonder if it could be five minutes for both question and answer. I've been keeping track. Okay, we haven't gone over five minutes yet. Oh, okay. All right, good. All right, so I'm, I'm, I'm I have... I'm turning the clock on you now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I have a question and a comment if I have time about the housing. So my question is to Don Drackley. At the last steering committee meeting, you referred to the second Elmer Crossing as a bypass and compared it to one in Paris, Ontario. Interestingly, the Paris bypass is actually a bypass. It goes around the city, not through vibrant residential neighborhoods in the center of town, like ours go. The bypass that you propose lands on the east side of the river in proximity to the recreational hub of this town. There's a skateboard park, a splash pad, three soccer fields, access to Ferris Park, a rotary trail, lawn bowling, boat launch, tennis courts, a daycare, and early years and youth centers. There are also 72 apartments for families, seniors, and the handicapped, hence loss of pedestrian traffic, such as young mothers walking with strollers and young children. And I don't know if everybody knows, you won't be able to access your vehicles, except on Saskatoon or Optrend Drive, you can't access from front or second anymore if that bridge goes in. Because you're recommending a bypass through all this community activity, there is a much increased potential for tragic accidents as a result of the increased traffic, because we're talking about in the future 12,000 vehicles a day going through Campbellford. So why are you recommending a bypass through residential areas? Don, I think you're, I think that's yep. a question. Yep, it is. We're recommending the second Alma crossing and the twinning, or the replacement of the existing bridge because based on all the considerations that we evaluated, we think that that has the best long-term 
um, benefits to this community. Admittedly, when you look at it today, those types of land uses that you just mentioned are definitely there, and some of them will be impacted. We are looking at it from a long-term overall community benefit, and that's why we selected it. Okay, so you're talking about traffic, or you're talking about culture, heritage, people? All of it, all of it. Okay, I, I fail to see that, but I'll, I'll leave that answer. The comment that I'd like to make is what you're saying about low rental housing at the north side or the either side of the current bridge. We have established that that's not low rental housing. It's market rental housing. They're privately owned. They're not subsidized. Um, the rents that I was able to find out about are actually higher rents by a substantial amount than I charge for my rental. Um, the people who did the consulting were not able to get in there to have a look at what kind of condition they're in. So no real statements could be made about whether they were suitable for renters. I've heard them called the snake pit. Um, there may be 22 apartments there, but there are 72 apartments that will be impacted at Second Alma. They're not smack up against it, but they're certainly within 50 to 75 feet, well, yards. And Garshell will be almost underneath, that's 13 apartments, underneath the second hour bridge. So a whole lot of people besides just heritage homes will be impacted. Um, interestingly, at the end of the housing study, the consultants suggested that this housing was fair to modest, and that's without getting inside, that's <coughs> from the outside, and that there was plenty of time before they were taken down before, so that they could apply for provincial money. So I just want to make sure that we all know that they're not low income. And thank you very much. Okay, you're welcome. And you have it to four minutes. Thank you. Uh, good evening. My name is Dwight Boyd. I live at RR number four, Warworth. I have a question for Mike Rudder. Mike, to fund this proposed structure located in the municipality of Trant Hills, application will have to be made to senior levels of government for funding assistance. In addition to this proposed don't stop to shop bypass, Trent Hills is planning to build a new recreational wellness center, a field house in Hastings, a substantial addition to the work with arena, a new $7 million fire hall in Campbellford, and all of the other infrastructure needs in this municipality as outlined in the infrastructure asset audit, which concludes that in the next 10 years, Trent Hills will need $337 million worth of upgrades to the infrastructure. That's in excess of a third of a billion dollars. We've certainly hit the big time. It is unrealistic to expect that the province and the feds will contribute to all or even to most of these infrastructure needs, some of which are immediate. If we can't afford them all, how would you prioritize them in order of importance to the municipality of Trent Hills over the next 10 years? For example, is an unnecessary second crossing more important than a wellness center, storm sewers, etc.? Mike, do you want to take the microphone? And I guess I would start by saying, yeah, it's a it's a daunting task. There's no question. There's a lot of needs. Um, I would also add, and, and a bit of a reference to the previous question, um, municipalities have had infrastructure infrastructure deficits for many, many, in fact, always. And if, if we had not done anything um, because we had an infrastructure deficit, then nothing would have ever been built for many, many years. And so um, it, we, we are now taking a more business-like approach, as the mayor outlined, in, in how we address those. Um, in terms of which would I recommend, um, those will be council's decisions as we move forward and as we approach the builds and, and uh, th those aren't my decisions to be made, to be quite honest. So I know that's not the answer you were looking for, but no, that's not. the truth. Um, in terms of council have identified uh, the, the, um, the Recreation Wellness Center as their priority project or the priority infrastructure project at this point. They've done a lot of investments in water, wastewater, they've already made those investments, roads, bridges. Um, we have 10-year plans and all of those assets, so um, those those investments continue to be made. Okay, so that the rest of it's up to council then. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, my second question is to the mayor. Mayor McMillan, in a recent article in the community press, you stated that the proposed bypass is critical infrastructure. 
if our current bridge has a further service life of 30 years, in view of all of the other needs confronting this municipality and the county, please tell us specifically what makes this bypass critical infrastructure at this time. Okay, that's a good question. Um, and it is critical infrastructure, which is not the same as critically needed. Um, just going back to your last question, I'm not so sure why it was even pointed to my quarter, because this is a county project and will be funded by Northumberland County. I understand that, Mr. Mayor, okay. but also our tax dollars flow into the county. That's right. Along with 80,000 some odd other people. That's right. And, of course, the intention is, is still, as, as it has been previously stated, to use provincial and federal monies. Now, we're going back to something that, that I want to have to repeat is that we're not going to wish this problem away. Well, Mr. Mayor, excuse me, but I don't you think ask, we need any repetition. We're on a time limit here and other people want to speak. You ask me a question, either you're going to let me answer it or you're not. Please answer the question. Thank you. The bridge problem is not going to go away, no matter what it costs. The bridge is going to need to be replaced. The consultant has already stated the urgency of preparing now for when that time comes. And there's been discussion by several engineers that it's got approximately a 20 to 30 year lifespan before it needs to be replaced. No matter what the traffic does, whether the traffic goes up, the traffic goes down, the structure of the bridge isn't going to last any longer than that. Okay, that's fine. Thank so, you, Mr. Mayor. I appreciate your answer. Well, you just didn't like the answer. You're repeating yourself. Well, you asked the same question, I'm going to give you the same answer. The bridge needs to be replaced, and that's what we're all here for. We're here to replace a bridge. And whether we replace it with one wide one, or whether we replace it with two two-lane ones. That's what we're here for. The question was timing regarding, in view of all of the other needs that are asking for infrastructure money. The timing at this time. The, the timing is because of the length of time it takes to get ready to build a structure that large. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay, next speaker. Hi, I'm Bonnie Wilson from Camelford. Two areas I'm concerned about. Number one, the cost of all these studies to have no decision. I really want to ensure that the county makes a decision, and if it's we're not going to do anything, then us as taxpayers don't have to get studied to death. No human being would get this many architectural reports and you'd end up not being able to build the house. It's just too much money without a final outcome. I would really like to see an outcome this time, like make this the end. My other area is the social aspect. You know, I realize the downtown bridge apartments are an eyesore, first to admit it. And maybe they're not deemed as low income because the government isn't funding them, but the people that live there are not well off. Uh, there's 46 units there to my understanding. I know we have a housing project coming, which is only going to be, I think it's 24 units. None of them are bachelors, none are three bedrooms. They're one and two bedrooms. And as a social worker, I know the people who get those apartments, and they're the hardest hit by the children, children and mothers with children. Most people think the children the people are left out of that. But the vast majority of people that are there are not going to get that housing. And there's an over 10 year waiting list. So even if this twinning came to fruitation, they're likely never going to be on the list to get into subsidized housing in this area. There's, it's just not going to make it up for them. And I do feel I'm a property owner here as well. I would rather have my property expropriated before I see somebody in the street homeless. And I feel that way. So I just want to make mention of that I thought the social aspect was a little wrong here. It really should have leaned more toward the second ALMA because property owners are going to be paid for their inconvenience or expropriation or their properties can be bought. The tenants in there are getting nothing but the boot. The other people, the property owner is getting paid, but nowhere for those people to go. I would just like that to be known in the decision-making process. That, that, is being, that is recorded. Uh, your comments are being recorded. Okay. As for the decision-making process, uh, Don covered that off, and when he did his presentation, it's a three-stage process, so the steering committee will make, their, uh, make a decision on April the 25th, 
uh, Trent Hills Council on June the 3rd and County Council on June the 18th. Is there any way that a cost of all these studies can be listed? I googled everything I could find. I can find all the studies, every one of them going back to uh, the 80s on the need for a new bridge, but I couldn't find one bill from anybody. How much did we pay for all of those studies? What's the bottom line? Where is it? Pay to the order of? We, we, we could get that information. I'd there is, love a, there to is see a record at the county of how much has been spent, but you also have to realize that if you want to be able to make an informed decision, you have to have good information. And, it's a, and good, good information costs money. Um, so, Mo, do you want to talk to that? You, you may know some, you may have a, a ballpark figure in your head. Uh, yes, um, Mr. Chair, I do have some numbers for the PEA um, that we have. Um, so far, uh, with TSH and ACOM, which was in 08, 09, uh, county spent about 319000 And then from 2010, uh, when the project was put on hold um, to date, which includes the Janowar, uh, Meridian, uh, IBI, and some of the other smaller consultants, uh, we have spent over half a million dollars. And I also noticed there's an 89 study by W.M. Dillon, Consulting Engineers, uh, back in January of 89 for the traffic increase and growth in vehicle size study, which you're, you're, also You're down to 40 to seconds. Bridge. Okay. Just on that same note. Okay. I'm good. Thanks. Thank you. Hello. My name is Judy McLean. I live at 109 Saskatoon, and I live at the property owner. My question is in two parts, and it's about the properties. The one part would go to my brother. When properties are acquired, uh, there's going to be a loss of tax revenue, probably a considerable one. How is the municipality going to make that up? Yeah, I actually uh, want the mayor to answer that. Or I, I thought it would go to Mike, but I don't know who it would go to. Um, whether or not there's actually a, a loss of revenue depends on the, the use of the property. So as an example, if, if a residential property is purchased by the municipality or the county and then is leased out as residential property, then it would still be taxed as residential tax. So um, there wouldn't be a loss in that case. The only time it would be a loss of revenue if it was, if it stayed in municipal ownership and the use was basically turned into an institutional use, so it became a park or a uh, you know, a museum, whatever it might become. So if it was for a municipal use only, that's the only time there would be a loss of tax revenue. Otherwise, it, it, it would be taxed at whatever it was being used for, commercial, residential, or otherwise. Okay, thanks, Mike. Uh, the second part of my question is to do with the, the property acquisition corridor. It's identified as a few homes that would have to be acquired, and yet throughout, I believe, Don has referred to it as a bypass now, as a as a truck route, as through traffic. It, I, it's just he said the nature of the whole corridor is going to change. Second Street, Alma Simpson, they're all going to change. I'm going to be taken care of. I know this. It's not not really about me, but the people down the street who are now suddenly living with truck traffic and perhaps six thousand vehicles a day. All of the people along that new corridor, if they choose Second and Alma, I think they're impacted. And, and I'll ask this of Gil. Do you think they're impacted? Do you think they should have a right to be offered to be bought out to get out of that busy corridor? It's not what they signed up for. Well, I, I, think, I, I, think, I think, you know, we, we all recognize there's going to be some, uh, you know, property uh, transition state, uh, you know, Transactions take place, so we'll, we'll do. I guess the uh, we'll do whatever has to be done. When I read it, it looked like you'd only be doing something it, on my side of the street from Saskatoon yes. to the front, and yet the traffic is going to go down, as I understand it, as far as County Road 87 on the east side, and certainly on the west side, it's going to go from Alma right through over to Simpson and out 30. Yes, there, there, there will be. There's no doubt there will be a, a number of homes impacted, and uh, there is a plan in place to address that. 
for, for those other houses as well? I don't know how many of the houses, Mo, uh, do, you, do you have a, an actual count or maybe Don has? I, I guess my point too is, you refer to eight homes being impacted or acquired. Is that, is that a reasonable property acquisition? I think the money is going to have to be much more. You can't do that to people. You can't put them on a truck route. Uh, my understanding from that property guideline that um, Don has um, uh, spoken about is that there are seven homes that are directly impacted. So those homes, um, there are five on second lot one and two uh, to the west side. And um, that property guideline basically indicates uh, um, a purchase, outright purchasing of those properties. Mm -hmm. And then the property plan also indicates that there are other homes uh, which will be impacted as you have indicated, for example, between Frank and let's say uh, Frank Street and going towards Simpson, uh, which will also be required for either minor widening of roads. Um, so there, there, there will be, if there is no direct impact to a house, but there are impacts due to the, to the road widening or other, uh, other improvements, uh, there will be a second tier compensation plan. And then the third level would be if there are noise impacts. Um, and, and that noise impact also is being addressed in that. So there are, I, I believe, um, do, do you have, Christina, the number? I think there are very could, could you, homes that... Could you wrap it up in about 30 seconds, Mo? Yeah, I think there are overall about 30 plus homes that we're looking at. Thank you. Okay, that's your next. Uh, good evening. My name is Gary Marzinski. I'm a 12 year resident of the community. I've got a question here for Don, and it's regarding the long term planning. Okay, now my understanding is that the, the Trend Hill strategy for the master fire plan long term is considered 5 to 15 years. Uh, Hydro's long term viability study on which your firm worked uh, is considered to be 15 years. Right? So in most long term plans fall in the range of 5 to 15 years and yet for the EA here uh, you're looking at uh, a projection for vehicular needs and traffic patterns in the community is 50 years or more. Now, we do, as I understand, we do not actually have a master transportation plan in effect. So are we putting the cart before the horse by building the bridge and then planning around it? Like, why, why is that? Thank you. Five to fifteen, but for for this specific thing, we're looking at fifty. Right. Whenever you plan uh, for major urban infrastructure like a bridge that has a seventy-five year lifespan, you don't plan for it in the five or ten year planning horizon. I, I understand that, but would you not have the plan in place before you situated the bridge? The, you're talking about the transportation master plan, I presume. Yeah which is a 20-year plan, which the county does not have right now, but is initiating the development of. Right. And I believe as a transportation planner that there's been enough work spent on the river crossing question in Trent Hills that the need and justification for that crossing improvement, no matter what it is, has already been confirmed. And it, yes, it probably will be looked at as part of the transportation master plan, but this situation here in Trent Hills has already been studied to death. Right, but if you're looking at the master plan and you're looking at a 50-year projection, I mean, would you not be looking at less of these troubles? Because I ran a business right on that bridge for many years, and I watched the traffic on that bridge. But as I say, going to my question is, that if these long-term projections are 5 to 15 years in average, now we're jumping up to 50 years. That's right, because right. that's the, the you're, you're, we're talking about a piece of infrastructure but, that lasts that long, if not longer. No, I understand all it should actually last longer. There's bridges in Europe that are like 4,000 years exactly. old, right? Yeah. But the point being is that, you know, without 
that plan in place, like how can we determine that this is where that bridge needs to be? I mean, if it's a bypass bridge, it should be out of town. It should not be in the middle. The The county's transportation, 20-year transportation master plan is not going to tell where to build a new bridge in, in Campbellford. It is going to say in the Campbellford area there is X amount of river crossing capacity today and will need Y in the future and you should do an environmental assessment in order to confirm the location and type of crossing. Well, the county has already taken that initiative to prepare this environmental assessment. Okay, well, thank you very much. We need to place the bridge in 20 or 30 years time, or even how you would place the bridge. This is to do with is the sufficient traffic volume to justify having two bridges in Canada? Now, if we look at the overall statistics for North America, this is what I based things on, we will see that since 2007, overall traffic volumes in terms of vehicle miles traveled, have actually declined. We'll also see that the projections, straight line, fixed percent projections, look totally absurd. And I'm prepared to show the committee the research I've done on this. Thank you. We'll pass that on to the uh, committee. So, given that the overall North American